All right, folks, hello and welcome to uh, Dover International Speedway. Once again, my name is John Theodore, streaming live at twitch.tv slash John underscore A underscore Theodore, recorded version of this broadcast at youtube.com slash John Theodore. I want to thank you all very much for tuning in. Going to be in the number one car again tonight, the uh, Cory Bush for Congress 1987 Chevrolet Monte Carlo. Um... Do another race. I'm really enjoying the Fanatic CSL DD. The more that I think about it, the more impressed I am with the uh, value that you get with this wheel. It's really a premium product for the I price point. A couple good ones here. Very impressive. Um, it's the first direct drive wheel that I've owned or used. Uh, and, you know, I'm sure that, you know, you get good value to stepping up to the their podium line. But I got to say, I'm, I'm very impressed with what this thing offers for the money. This is what happens when I get absolutely no warm-up laps. <laughs> because I was messing around with lighting and just cut things to raise or close for registration. I got no warm-up, so well off of the pace for where I would normally want to be for a qualifying lap. Still uh, second, second place right now, though. one8 k strength of field. Looking to uh, redeem myself after my uh, mistakes yesterday. Do a better job of uh, taking care of tires if we get a long run. Just constantly remember that tire management, tire management, tire management. I just need to remind myself of that as we go through the uh, the whole race. Need to be fast. Need to you know get in position, but it's so important to not overheat that right front tire. Don't overdrive the corner entries here. Don't lean on that right front as I'm making my uh, arc really let the car roll through the center of the corners rather than sliding. It's so easy to slide it here at Dover and there is short-term speed to be had from doing that but it absolutely destroys you over the long run. Just gonna let the uh, whole qualifying run play here, so that there's something interesting on camera. I'm talking to my dog, he's wanting to chew on some of the cardboard over there, which I don't want him to do. Come here. Okay, fine. He's been a bit under the weather recently. But, uh, seems to be feeling better now. I had to take him to the vet today. Which is never fun. There's a good boy. Yeah, I definitely want to point out again. Oh, did I just turn it off? That's not good.
Yeah. So. Proof JT has legs. So many proofs today. We call them J proofs here, Nathan. All right. Good luck, everybody. I pledge to be a good sport, whether I win or lose, to know that people online are real people and words have real impact. To set a positive example yep, you with do. my behavior, to speak up against discrimination, hate speech, harassment, and abuse, no, no, to show integrity to by me. honoring the rules of my opponents and my teammates, to stop listening and reassess if I'm told that words or actions are harmful and to respect others, even if their sincere opinions are different from my own. Exclamation mark G L H F in my Twitch channel chat. Link in the description below this video if you'd like to take the pledge yourself. Be a part of making online gaming a better, more pleasant place for everyone. Also, check down below. There are a few, uh, couple merch links. There's a uh, my affiliate link for Fnatic, the affiliate link for Track Racer, and the new edition is the link to get the Living Color Connect, which is that cool LED strip that you see in the background. I need to do some tweaking to make it. Um, hang a little bit better. I want to have some fun shaping it. Um, I thought that having it border the picture and then the, the car sheet metal over there would be a good idea. So um, got a few more clips. I need to uh, do it. It's exclamation mark LED in uh, chat to get the message um from Mubat on that nathan exclamation mark led in the chat will get you the link for the living color as well and yeah the the that is uh that is the invention of one mr Remember, mike seal uh, who uh you guys might recognize who he's done setups for me He's spouted for me on some races. Big time friend of the channel, long time friend of, long time uh, friend of mine. So, uh, you know, we definitely want to see him succeed with his business venture there. So, uh, anyone wants to go help him out uh, by ordering a Living Color Connect, that'd be great. Morphe, how you doing? Yeah. Decided to do one a little bit earlier again today. So, uh, Slightly more EU friendly stream. 1.8k strength of field. Right, uh, 19 cars. One of them is, looks right, like it's starting from the pits. Have a great day. Have some fun. Green. Oh, Solid green. start. Cleanly in uh, second place here. Inside, clear. Inside, inside. Still there. Clear if you need it. Oh reckon, boy. Reckon, reckon, reckon. Caution, caution. Kurt just let me go the there. <laughs> Closed right now. Lining up behind the pace car. And then they, the uh, the they wrecked. I was not expecting them to just pull over like that. Line up behind the pace car. All right, the road is open. <laughs> 15 all the way from 10th there. <laughs> Good thing he went to the inside. Yeah, I, m I must have pressed L2 to intimidate or something. That's it. So, NASCAR 21 and Ignition, they claimed that they're giving everyone the features that they want. I have yet to see evidence of an intimidate button. They are not given. They are clearly not given the NASCAR console gaming community everything they want. Sorry, dog is clearly feeling better if he's chewing on cardboard. By the way, these the P 
PC-37X from Sennheiser. Really cool little feature. If you click it up, it's an automatic microphone mute. Very nice, very convenient. I love headsets that have an on headset mute feature. Um, really important for, uh, you know, like Zoom calls and stuff like that. Um, although, I do recommend, you know, if you're doing Zoom conferencing, I prefer cordless versus corded. These are great, uh, great headset for streaming. Pretty good high quality microphone. Um, open ear cups so that you can actually hear stuff going on in the environment still. Um, so, you know, I don't like being... If I'm in the house by myself, I don't necessarily like being completely closed off to the outside world. Um, but those, that's exclamation mark. Headset and chat. Um, got them from uh, Mass Drop. But they do have a non-Mass Drop version. The Mass Drop ones are a little bit less. The direct drive wheel is awesome. I'm really impressed with this thing, Nate. Um, given that it's basically at the same price point as the CSL Elite was, I think it might be slightly more expensive. But not, not by a huge amount. And... The degree, like the improvement over uh, what I had with the CSL Elite is huge. Um, it is so much more precise, much more responsive, much better feedback. Um, it's just snappier uh, in in the the feedback that it gives you. The feedback is more direct, as it were. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, I, I had an adjustment when I went from the my Logitech G27 to the Fanatic CSL Elite. It did take a little bit of a learning curve and an adjustment going to that. Going from the CSL Elite to the direct drive just felt very, it just feels very much more natural. Um, it did take a little bit to get the, you know, get things set up. The, I had to download drivers, get the settings dialed in, get everything recalibrated. But, yeah, um, once it's all set up and everything's good, that's, that I ruined it. I can't go back. I, I got to be honest with you. I'm absolutely fine with that because the way that I like to do things is I like to get something that's set in place, have it set, and then just go with it. Um, I didn't use the defaults. What I did was um, Fanatic actually has a post in their forums now where they have recommended settings for iRacing for all of their wheels. So I pulled their recommended settings from that and just put those in and uh, it's working really well. It was, it had a little bit of um, grittiness to it with the uh, the default settings or with my old settings from the CSL Elite. Or uh, graininess, but it's really smooth now. Now that it, I've got the. Um, break, 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 oh goodness, breaking, they're wrecking breaking, again. Breaking, breaking. Caution, caution. Damn, bro, G break. Benson, what's going on, man? Welcome. The road is closed. Yeah, See, I do have chat guys working. Guys I didn't have chat working. Uh, last night. Nah, nah, you had the idiot stay out with them broke ass car. Or someone breaks on in turn one. I don't know how many people the 15 wants to wreck this race. You're going to be lining up behind here and the I door. Don't. I don't know, but I'm sketched out. Yeah, the lighting. I, I'm, mo I'm moving the lighting around. I'm trying to play with it. I want the living color back there to pop a little bit better. Um, so I'm Light trying to play with the lighting. The I've clearly gotten it wrong. Road will so be I'm going to keep playing with it, and uh, we'll get it right. What I want is I need to have the lighting on my face, but I don't want that wall lit. I want that wall to, wall to remain dark. So I think I need to uh, set up some... Maybe I can take all this cardboard that I've got laying around to set up some flaps to um, direct the lighting a little bit better. I think that'll work. I also need to do... There's a lot of clutter down here, and if I clean that up somewhat, that'll be better.
put a ring light over this monitor here so that it hit me from this way, would that direct away some of the light? Because I've got, I should actually have the light right here. That's where it used to be, was it was right behind the webcam, but I should have it coming back this way more as opposed to going this direction. But if I put, so you're saying if I put another light there, it'll cancel the light out and keep that wall darker? That might work. Because I do have two lights. I'm only actually using one tonight, but normally there's another one back there that hits from this direction. And that I think that that was the same intended effect, but both of them were hitting that wall. So if I had, yeah, a second light that was coming this way, that might work. Career in number 10, last night in dirt. Well done, G. Benson. Congratulations to you. Always happy when uh, my viewers are having success. We're going for uh, paved oval career win number 51 today. Um, I don't want to jinx anything. I, got, I, I messed up horribly last night. I thought I was going to win last night. But uh, we're sitting on 50. We've been sitting on 50 for a while. We're at 52 overall on official. And then I've got some hosted, a couple of league race wins and stuff. Um, one, really one league race win that was of any consequence. A um, couple hosted race wins, but yeah. As far as official stuff goes, 50 on paved oval, one on dirt oval, and one on road. So yeah, getting the new uh, wheelbase and getting that has inspired me to start trying to clean up some other things with the with the stream, just kind of upgrade stuff around. I need to clean up around the house in general too. A bit of a mess if you if if the background over here isn't doesn't make that obvious. We're running out of cars in this one quick. <laughs> Those were uh, two wrecks that were pretty close to the front of the field that have uh, considerably cut down the uh, uh, number of folks that we have to be one to go. left that are competitive. The way it is right now, you're going to be on the outside. I think the 15 might lose a lap there? No. Oh yeah, no wave arounds in this series. Which is unfortunate for the four. He's actually going to have control on this restart. That's not good for us. You were there for the dirt win. <laughs> that dirt win was fun, man. That was a heck of a race. That was a great battle that we had. I should do more dirt. I should do more road. I really do want to do more road. That's something that I I legit want to get better at that discipline. So I keep I've been saying for a long time that I want to do more road. I, I will eventually actually uh take a nice big deep breath here. Okay, Think everybody would check up for the start. Pace cars off. Be ready, do your thing, boss man, be ready. Looks like you should be lining up behind the four. Ready, ready, green flag. Straighten that wheel out as soon as I can. Go ahead, 11. Big thing I want to do is make sure that I'm rolling those corners rather than uh, sliding the right front through them. I did so much damage to my right front last night by uh, scrubbing it. I don't need to just run away. I need to, as long as we're managing that gap, that's good. Definitely don't need to do that, that little bit of a scrape won't hurt us one bit though.
Seven has gotten by the two now. Hey, hey, Gasso, how you doing? Welcome, welcome. This is good, we're actually getting some laps now. This is what we wanted. We wanted some lamps under green. We wanted to run this thing out a little bit. One caution right around halfway would not uh, be a problem. Just to make the uh, pit decision really easy. It's nice and easy. We got no pressure out back, so. Just drive smooth. This series has uh, fixed sets. Out. That's a pretty good time for a yellow. Can you see the pit sign now, Jersey? You get more acclimated to it, or is it still difficult? Pit road is closed. I think we should be behind the four. Behind the pace car. Pace car on back straight. Check up. The road will be open. And there we go. Kurt's a lonely man. Yeah, yeah, he had, had good consistent pace over the rest of the field. So this, I'm hoping that this can be our only pit stop. But we're going to check what the tire wear is. I was really trying to make an effort to be easy on him. Yeah, 92, 93. That's more like it. <laughs> That's fine on tire wear. If we can keep running that pace and uh, 
Hold the lead. Go Banco, go Banco, hard, hard, hard. We're gonna be in great shape. Road speed. Just a heads up, you know that you only have one set of right side tires remaining. All right, I'm aware. Like gonna be lining up behind the I hope that we uh, don't have to use them. Because I would be fine with it going green the rest of the way from here. Two. Yeah, this is official series. How you doing, Fedora? Thanks, Carl. Thank you for that follow. Much appreciated. Welcome to the family. All right, we should get one to go here. A one to go. There will be 51 laps to go when we get the green flag. And uh, making that with the tires wearing at the rate that they were wearing on that run, absolutely no problem. Look there under caution. All right. Pace cars off. Be ready. We're rolling. Green flag. Green flag in the Good air. Stay waiting. The uh, 18 did not do well under that yellow. Outside. Clear, clear, clear. All right, let's see if we can run away from this field again. Sure make my job easy up there, brother. I want to just drive real smooth and consistent make them run their tires off if they want to try to keep up. But for me, I want it to be a nice, smooth, consistent line. Just manage that gap. No need to overdrive it and try to just bury them. No one's demonstrated any uh, ability to apply real pressure on us so far in this race. and smooth. Nice and smooth. Every lab, it's all about being smooth. Miss my line a little bit there.
We're fine, though. Six tenths of a second lead, no pressure. Thirty two laps complete. Completing thirty three this time by. Closing in on the halfway point in the race. Just let it roll, no slide. Closing in on the three of James A. Allen. He's the one who does the surveys and runs the forms for this series. Puts out the surveys and figures out, works with iRacing to set the schedules for uh, this series, which is pretty cool. Unfortunate that he's having a uh, rough one here today. But I'm sure he'll have better races here this week. Just got caught up in some of that early race nonsense that we had. expect to have any trouble getting around him. Stay in hunt. Thanks, Outside. man. Outside. Clear high. Man, this is fun. It is fun. I love this track. All right. That's 37 and a half laps. We're halfway. I never thought I'd say that, but it is. Thank you. This is a great track, and these are great cars. cars right up till about three races ago. I do not understand that philosophy. <laughs> We're halfway in the that opinion just makes no sense to me. These cars are so much fun. The next gen cars are like go cars compared to these things. Yeah, no, I drove them. I don't see about them. Pick up the pace a little bit here. You got to hear Mike. As I noticed that they're gaining a bit. Managing the race, managing this lead. Managing my tires.
Still a lot of laps left. There's a lot that can happen. We've seen before. There's all kinds of ways that these races can go wrong. That last lap was a little bit slow. And three and four must have been where I lost most of the time. Six laps complete. A little Thank more you. rotation out of the thing. No problem. Let those two race each other Turns for a second. Eight minutes of optional tends to slow you down a bit. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's a lot. I'm actually kind of surprised it's driving. Hey, hey, saucy driver. Thank you for that prime sub. 21 months, really appreciate it. Yep, we're leading, Mike. Just trying to, you know, really take care of the tires, manage the gap, and uh, cruise here. We're in cruise control. Just logging laps and hoping that it stays green. As you can see, I've been playing around with the lighting a little bit after your suggestions. Um, I will also do some work on uh, tightening up the way that the uh, Living Color Connect over there is hung. By the way, Mike, go ahead and do exclamation mark LED in my uh, chat. Yeah, I figured you'd like that. Let me know if you want any uh, tweaks to the wording on there, but I figured that message would be a pretty good one. Yeah, I'm going to refocus the uh, studio lights that I've got. I think I've got some ideas on how I can... Uh, make those a little bit more effective and focused so that they hit put light on my face properly um, without washing out that back wall there. It's pretty impressive though how uh, powerful a light you can get for not that much money these days. Um, those were not terribly expensive to get on Amazon when I got them. Just going to give that 18 a lot of room there. The more cars we put a lap down, the easier things are for us. Although I think that's two, for, two down now. Because I think this is also two down for James Allen, but we've got... 
tenth up there that we can put a lap down before too terribly long. Twenty to go. We're pretty close to the point in the last race where we blew that right front tire. I've been driving a lot more conservatively on this run though, so I think our tires will hold up. We're not asking them to go quite as many laps either, although it's a similar amount in terms of uh, green flag laps to what we were asking them out of them yesterday. Outside, Thanks, man. Outside. Appreciate you. Come here, outside. Fourteen in pit road. I think that means that some of our competition are losing tires. Thank you. Daryl Ultra Western Auto Scheme. That thing looks really cool. It's funny because that's actually that really should be on the Chevy, but I think that they've got that on the T-Bird, which actually looks more like the Lumina in terms of shape than the uh, Monte Carlo does. So I'll putting try. it on the T-Bird actually makes it look closer clear, clear, clear. to what that car actually looked like in terms of the overall body shape. Still funny seeing that on a what's actually a Ford body though. Whoever did that paint scheme though did a pretty darn good job with it. That thing looks cool. Outside, outside. Clear high. All right, 15 to go. Put ninth place a lap down now. Thanks, Judge. Appreciate it. Fourteen to go. We've got four and a half seconds on second place now. And our uh, Lapping consistently quicker than them now. I think we got had an easier time getting through that lap traffic than they did. Jeff Rogers is in the pits up ahead. I have to assume that the only reason folks are pitting is because they've blown right front tires. Doing everything I can to take care of mine. We learned yesterday the hard way how quick this track will chew them up. Ten to go. It's gonna be ten laps to go here. Only 
Only seven on the lead lap now. Five just dropped off by a huge amount back there, looks like. Or maybe not, maybe it's just the relative going goofy. Tires ain't no joke in this series, I guess. Nope. This track really eats them up if you're not careful with them. He just told me to slow down or I'm going to need rubber. Never heard that warning before. That probably means that I'm guessing that they added in a warning for when you're close to blowing the tire. Looks like some of the guys behind me have started to fall off the cliff, which means that they're really close to blowing that. The cliff in, uh, here at Dover is pretty immediate. At other tracks, uh, you'll start losing time, um, but you'll still have, you know, six, seven, maybe eight laps before the tire actually blows. Here, it's like you get, you get maybe a one lap warning where you're losing time before the thing just goes on you. About five to go here. Five laps to go. to go. Tell me I need to pit for repairs. What's up with that? That's a... Got flat. Well, that sucks. Take it easy on those tires and try to get them You have to get your tire to zero for oh, man. to get a uh, people. That means that I'm getting close to it. I just got the warning. With three laps to go, I think you can ride around with a meatball for a couple laps and be fine. Two to go. Should be two more laps. We get the white flag, then we know we're golden. I'm Even if it goes, we're not going to gonna lose seven else, seconds. Yeah, no Last lap. I lost one because of blown right front yesterday. Yeah, I know. I was in it with you. I didn't understand what was going on, but now I do. Learned my lesson. I absolutely babied this thing around for 50 laps tonight. Well, that's the first time I ever came across that, but I'm after learning a lot about these cars in the last couple of two or three races, so. That's a win, baby. Great job, bud. Could uh, be prouder, man. You drove a great Good race there, John. today. You did an awesome thing, too. Thanks, man. Appreciate you guys. Good race, guys. A little bit of a bumpy start there, but once we got rolling, we were able to get some green laps. Yeah, good win, John. Good race. Good win. Thank you. Yeah, it was clean. I enjoy this a lot. <laughs> Thanks, guys.
Good job, John. Thanks, man. Guys, cover up the fuel cans. Cover everything up. Cover up the tires. Guns. All right, Polish victory lap time. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry, Morphy. That's why we had to come do it. See, you got the live show, though, because of last night. If I would have won last night, I might not have come back tonight. But, uh, yeah, after after what happened yesterday, I, I needed one. Oh, that was painful. Got some of the I rating back. But more importantly, win number 51 on Oval. <clears throat> and that feels good. Feels good to get a, a dominant win that was pretty well on cruise control. I'm, have basically never had that or haven't had one like that in a while. I did have one of those in one of Mike's sets, uh, open setup race. I've never had one that was on cruise control like that in a fixed setup race, except uh, there was an ARCA, or back then it was the National Series, K&N Series, uh, win here at Dover again that was kind of like that. Nope, only 51. I don't win that many races because I tend to, especially lately, I've been seeking out um, higher SOF splits that really put a challenge on me. It's it, it's very rare that I end up in a split like this where there's a significant gap in I rating between myself and the number two car. Yeah, just caution. We, uh, this is my tradition. When we get a win, do the uh, Polish victory lap. There we go. Some better donuts. Leaders, uh, winner's prerogative. You get the track to do what you will with it. We're not quite lined up with the start finish line here. Take it easy on your tires. Cool with Joker's off a little bit. All right. Pull it over right here in front of the Dover sign. We parked it, guys. Victory Lane. Whew! All right. That felt good. <laughs> Feels good to get a win. Kill the floodlight for the chrome horn recap? Yeah, all right. Let me, uh, one second. Spooky Mike time mode, and let's see, what do we, uh, what do we want to put this on, Mike? Um, I was kind of a fan of the color comets one. I thought that was pretty cool, so we'll put it on that. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at the cautions here. So this was right on the start. Kurt, I don't know if he uh, was having trouble or just decided that he really didn't want to race me that hard. But we go down in here and 
Looks like the uh, 15 gets in the back of the four. Yep. No one else in it. Pretty fortunate that uh, no one else got in there. Everyone else did a really good job of getting around that one. One more from a different angle. Yeah, that's a pretty cool. Uh, screen there. Let's see. Always like to get screenshots to kind of mark the occasion. This one again, we got going on this restart here. And uh, just flat pulled away from them. But didn't go for very long because we ended up with the 15 this time with contact from the six. And that was, that was a big one. Six just hooks it and gets collected. Big damage there. We'll look at that from his perspective too, but man. Big, big, big damage for the 15 car. Yeah, obligatory cut back right. Yep. That's how guys get in trouble. Not mean to call Mr. John Adams out here, but that's unfortunate. And the 19 gets a bit of it too. So four cars involved in that wreck. That was where James Allen got all of his damage. Let's take a look at that from his perspective here. There may have been, if we look at this, he sees it start to cut right, right here. If he's more off of the gas, there is a gap to shoot, but he's kind of going straight there. So yeah, I don't know. It, it's really hard to tell, but like there was a, potential opportunity for him to miss if he was targeting going low there but because he committed high um, he got caught up in it thing is is that when you're in the corner as well you can't just stomp on the brakes because it can upset the car and um, you know you just you, you end up in the wreck anyway that's just really unfortunate for him though and you can see maybe he did that with the way that the car had that trajectory right here. You see how it kind of is going towards the wall. He may have locked up the brakes and just kind of slid into him a little bit. He didn't actually lock him up because there's no tire mark, but that very well could have been what happened. Ugly, ugly wreck. Rough one for all three of those guys. Um, and then let's see, we get a restart and we got a good number of laps, lap 22, we get a caution, Trace Houston in the 15, who was involved in all three of the cautions in this race, loops it down, gets in the wall. More damage for him, and I think he called it after that. Yeah, 
that was it for him. 53 laps down. He he called it a day after that one. Um, we came down to pit road. The uh, rebel pilots got to do their service, although you don't actually see it because they don't have the animated pit crews for this series. And uh, yeah, then it was just smooth sailing under green. I won. Finally, got to win. It's been a little bit. So yeah, lap 75 here. Bring it around. We won by a little over nine seconds. Uh, lapped up to fifth place, although we were helped by some folks losing their tires. We had 35% on the right front, 22% on the right rear at the end of that one, although right rear got torched a little bit during the celebration. Um, but yeah, we got a winner. Nope, 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 nope. Not what we wanted. Not now. Get that one. Let's see. I'll start playing with camera angles now. There we go. That looks cool. All right, G. Benson, take care, man. Thanks for hanging out. Polish Victory Lab here. Always fun. So the reason I do that, uh, Alan Kowicki, uh, who is a Polish-American racing driver, decided he wanted to do something different after his first win at Phoenix, wanted something that they'd remember him by. So he decided to drive uh, his victory lap in reverse. And uh, then we lost Alan. And after that, Rusty Wallace, who was my favorite driver growing up as a kid, um, carried that tradition forward in honor of him for every race that he won from that point on. So now I do it with my uh, sim racing wins. If I get a win, Polish victory lap in honor of uh, Alan and, uh, you know, memory of Alan and uh, tip of the hat to uh, Rusty, who was my favorite driver growing up as a kid. Thanks, out of eight. Ninth place, yeah. Yeah, I saw that, man. That was a rough deal. We were I was taking a look at that. Um, not much he could do there. Just uh, when he cut it back up in front of you, you were kind of 
stuck. <laughs> it's just one of those deals that'll uh, get you sometimes. Super unfortunate. But uh, yeah, it feels good to get a win. Don't get those all that often. So uh, anytime I get one, that's pretty special. First driver engineer? Ah, uh, not the first. The last. I think he was. The, he's the last one that was. Uh, you know, really a true. You know, an owner driver in that in that true sense of the word of starting his own team. Um, I don't think he was the first driver engineer owner though. That 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 was pretty common back in the origins of the sport. We're gonna swing this around here. And get a uh, shot looking back on the field. And the uh, first wreck here. That'll be the cover shot. That thing looks cool. That 15 car was a bit of a dart without feathers, eh? <laughs> Is that, I feel like, because Wendell Scott was driver, owner, and did all the work on his own car. Um, I think it was more that it was unique, by, by the time Alan Kowicki was doing it, it was a bit of a throwback to the way that things had, used to be. Um, so it was unique in the sport at the time. It, it, it kind of stopped happening more. Um, although he may have been the first that, tr that actually, cause I think he is, did he have an engineering degree like, uh, Ryan Newman? That may have been, he, cause, uh, he definitely had a unique approach to it for sure. So, uh, 107 points, not a huge amount there, but wins a win. 27 I rating gained, um, win number 51 on oval for us. So, uh, really want to thank you guys for watching. Appreciate y'all. Um. <laughs> feels good to lock one down uh actually close it out we you know we hit we were we've been quick on pace all three races that we've run here this week and uh finished second and one blew the right front tire when we were leading last night and then finally got the win at night so uh yeah thank you guys so much for watching um shout out to Corey, uh who's continuing to fight hard for the american people to uh try to get us the the best deal that we can given the uh broken nature of our uh, political system um thanks to anykey.org for uh you know continue to be honored to be an affiliate with them they're a great organization um and uh you know fanatic for uh <laughs> making this cool product the CSLDD I'm really happy with that um and uh shout out to Mike with uh, that cool living color connect that I've got in the background right now. I'm going to figure out how to get my lighting done properly so that that gets featured a little bit better. I actually kind of like the way that this, uh, I'm going to figure out how to get a light on my face that works without washing that out. Cause I really do like how that looks now that it's got more illumination back there. Um, that looks really good as it is currently. So I'm going to keep working with it. We're going to, I'm just gonna, you know, make tweaks, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to become a professional streamer. I'm doing this. This is a hobby. This is fun for me. It's awesome when you guys tune in and watch. I hope you guys have fun um, watching my stuff. It, 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 it's honestly real cool to me that um, y'all find me entertaining. So uh, thank you guys very much, and uh, close out to the YouTube audience. Peace out, guys. Actually, gonna go. 
through to the big one so y'all can really see that living color connect in the background there. I am planning on doing a video that features that, that runs through some of the different settings and things like that. That's a really cool product that Mike's made. He's trying to get a business off the ground for himself. So uh, if you all find that interesting, you know, that there are a lot of different uses and ways that you can set that up around the house um, in different settings or for your stream yourself. There's a lot of creative ways uh, that you can use that to make a really cool background for your stream that's interesting and dynamic and fun. So, um, yeah. Thank you, guys. And uh, have a good one. Peace out, YouTube.